All right, I quickly wanted to explain in this video, this uh, particular model for projectile motion or objects in motion uh, with height with respect to time. So h of t, meaning height with respect to time equals negative g t squared plus v of o, or v of zero t, plus h of o, or h of zero. So all these variables mean something. So I already discussed h in the front. h is the height of an object. Uh, and t in the parentheses is time. So it's height with respect to time equals. G stands for gravity, or the downward pull or force on an object as it moves through uh, the height. So gravity, again, is a, a constant here on the planet Earth. Okay. So on most problems you're going to get uh, in our math class, we're going to deal with the gravity on Earth. Or if it's on Mars or some other planet, I will give you what the gravity is. And the gravity is very important. So on Earth, it's 16 feet per second squared. Okay. So it's, it not only consumes... Uh, height, but it also consumes um, the width as well. So it's a it's a it's a force that involves more than just uh, one dimension. It's two dimensional. Now, so and it's in feet per second squared. So there's other if you want to convert to meters per second or maybe miles per hour, there would be different numbers. But the constant of gravity on Earth, meaning the the uh, always constant element of gravity is pushing us down or pushing objects that are being thrown at 16 feet per second squared. And so we plug that 16 in for G in our problem. All right, next let's discuss V of zero or V of O. That's called our initial velocity. So it's initial because V of zero, meaning there's hasn't happened yet or it's at the beginning, so that's why it's zero. And velocity, that means like if we were to throw an object like a baseball. So if a baseball was thrown at a velocity of 24 feet per second. So, again, usually when we talk about the velocity of something, usually we talk about cars, miles per hour, or like a pitching arm is miles per hour. Uh, but, again, for most of our equations here, we're going to deal with feet per second because we deal with it, and it's because 16 is a nice number. It's a whole number. So that's why we deal with feet per second. No, no saying that we couldn't use miles per hour or meters per second, something like that, but... This makes the equation a lot easier just for as we're beginning to learn about motion and vertical motion. So the initial velocity, again, is so if, if uh, I'm throwing a ball at 24 feet per second from my arm, 24 is what gets plugged in to V of O. And now H of O, or H of zero, stands for the initial height of the object. So the initial height, it will tell you, like, I'm throwing a ball, I'm five feet tall, or the object is starting on the ground. So it starts on the ground. Now let's think about that. If it's on the ground, what's the height of it? It's going to be zero. So if it starts on the ground, like if it says starts on the ground or ground level, it's at zero. Or it might tell you a basketball player shooting it from a six feet tall. So the initial height would be six. So in this case, the zero gets plugged into H of O. So with all of my different variables and coefficients now plugged in, let's take a look at what this will look like. H of t equals negative 16t squared plus 24t plus 0. So I plugged in the 16 for g, and the negative goes in front. I plugged in 24 for v of o, and 0 in for h of o. Now I don't need to have the plus 0 because it won't affect my problem, so I'm going to erase it. So for this particular situation I've given you, h of t would be negative 16 squared plus 24t. So this is the height with respect to time for an object in, on Earth with an initial velocity of 24 feet per second. And with a question like this, I can ask you, tell me if I were to throw the ball, how long would it take for it to hit the ground? Or tell me at what time will the ball reach 10 feet? Or what height, I mean, at what height is the maximum height, or what time is the maximum height of the ball. So we can use that because this is a parabolic or a equation that makes a parabola. So that's the initial setup of how we set up a vertical motion problem, and the next video we'll do some examples together.